President Muhammad Buhari has been told his fellow or has told his fellow leaders in West Africa that free, transparent and credible elections are a panacea for peace and stability in the sub-region. According to the president, democracy and good governance must take its roots in Africa to sustain peace, stability and development, even as he urged leaders to redouble their efforts to guarantee the irreversibility of democracy. He also called on West African leaders to do all within their powers to ensure that elections are conducted in their countries in an atmosphere of trust, freedom and transparency. And joining us to discuss this is Timmy Frank, former Deputy National Publicity Secretary of the All Progressive Congress and Enefa Jodril, Chairman Rivers State um, Civil Society Organization. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Yeah, really, really. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll start with you, Mr. Timmy Frank. I, I always um, like the fact that, you know, we go back to talking about, uh, you know, governments and leadership, the um, trajectory that Mr. President has put forward since 2015. Now, the president has obviously um, been um, out at an event speaking with world leaders about transparency, um, free, fair and credible elections in Nigeria. But then uh, charity, they say, begins at home. Let's take a look at how the elections have been carried out so far uh, in, in the country and um, what Mr. President had to say. Um, the elections, of course, for 2023 is just around the corner. And INEC, thank goodness, has uh, been able to up its game. But the transparency, the atmosphere in which the elections are supposed to happen, all of that is determined by leadership. Can we boastfully say that the president is practicing what he's preaching? Well, uh, let me say thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. Oh, Mr. Frank, I think that we, you're breaking the <coughs> unable to hear you. Mr. Frank, let's try again. Can you hear me? I, th I think that we're losing connection with Mr. Frank. Well, let's go to Enefa. Enefa, you're, uh, you're representative of civil society in Nigeria. And just as I asked Timmy Frank, are we really practicing what Mr. President is preaching back home, looking at all of the things that have been happening in the country? Uh, to refer to uh, Mr. President, there seems to be some level of improvement in our policy and our electoral process. Uh, like the politicians who want to say that they would like that see, especially with the view uh, the Abedin Literal Act that has been uh, signed into law, and of course, the innovations that the INEC had introduced. You know, so uh, whether we agree or not, whether I like Mr. President or not, we have no choice to accept. However, uh, now, Mr. Timmy Frank, I started by asking a question. Mr. President um, has spoken about free, fair, credible elections and secure, safe atmosphere for which this can happen in. Now, Enefa, before he, he was cut off, said that we can give the president some credit because he has allowed for sudden adjustments in the Electoral Act that has made um, some of these things that he's speaking about to be possible. But I'd like to share your own thoughts on what you think. Well, I can tell you clearly, the president should understand what it takes to conduct free and fair election in any nation. The biggest beneficiary of free and fair election today in Nigeria, in 2015, the election that brought into power was free, fair, and credible. But again, in 2019, we expected the same process, but at the end of the day, the election in 2019 was rigged. There were so many outcries at that time for him to sign the Electoral Act, but because he was not a believer of free, fair, and credible election, he refused to sign the Electoral Act. In 2020, the civil society group, the international community, mounted pressure on the president to sign the electoral act to enable Nigeria to participate in a free and fair process of conducting election. 
At the end of the day, the president had to bow to pressure. You could see us at that time, the president signed the electoral act out of pressure, not because he wanted to sign the electoral act. Because the only way we can achieve free, fair, and credible election is when the electoral act is signed. But by the grace of God, for the first time, Dr. Buhari bowed to the pressure that has enabled us today to have a certain level of you know, free, fair, and credible elections. But again, we are about to test the water with the 2023. The last two elections seem to be good. Anambra was good. Oshun was good. But we cannot say because Oshun was good and Anambra was good that today the process is now totally in progress. The big election is going to be in 2023. Okay. We are waiting to see what the INEC and the APC agitation that he is trying to lead or free fair and credible election. Okay. Uh, then uh, after the elections in 2019, 2023, they will be able to commend Okay. Let me go back to NFA briefly. NFA, your civil society, there have been... Um, We've been seeing people advocating for free, fair, credible uh, elections, uh, a safe civic space for conversations to be had. I mean, uh, Timmy is not in Nigeria, but Enefa, you're in Nigeria. You understand the killings, the threats, the everything that's been happening in the space of two weeks. Um, we've seen the kidnappings. We've seen, I mean, all sorts of things happening amidst the campaigns, amidst the... Uh, f uh, back and forth between the, 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 the presidential candidates, um, you know, across boards. Um, and the president spoke again on the fact that, you know, um, the true democracy and good governance has to take its roots in Africa, being that the rest of the continent is looking to Nigeria. And I'm wondering, as civic civil society and talking about the issue of, you know, making sure that the civic space is safe enough for these conversations to be had, what are the things that need to be done for this to happen? Are we having enough of these conversations? And when can we say that we have come to a point where people know their rights, people understand what's happening, and people know that they need to be part of, you know, uh, the, the process, the electoral process in itself? Yes, uh, I think this, this, is, this is the big challenge. But I think I was coming to this uh, before the day talk uh, got back. Mm -hmm. But I did say that uh, if the president or like it, his access to the ability electoral bill, uh, for a lot of us, we were shocked, judging from the disposition of uh, the president. But beyond trustworthy and persuadedly, uh, it has a lot to do with uh, the will of the political class, especially those in government, to make sure that beyond the, the law that it is being implemented. For example, the issue of security. Because if there is this security, the people will not come out. And some people who come out, you know, who are crisis managers and, and who are the complaining about the changing of the civic state, we are, we are able to begin to subscribe that this high rate of crime, especially uh, in the northern part of the country, is a uh, shooting by politicians. In order to scare who will be voters out of uh, the political system. So it is in this area we think that then is signing the electoral uh, uh, deal, which, which which is a good thing this ever with the the government should make sure that they provide security. And not to be closing down uh, schools, closing down public centers, as if, as if government is bowing, is bowing to pressures of uh, ragtag, uh, petty, petty criminals. On the part of the uh, uh, city and by this I mean society, uh, Nigerians, uh, professional bodies, all of us should come out uh, to begin to raise the bar, uh, raise the campaign, build public confidence. Of course, we have got it off, uh, that, the, of course, the, the media too have a lot of role to play, and I must commend the media to society 
and other professional bodies for reviewing the bank to our testing. If you, whether you agree or not, the level of awareness and consciousness of our people to even get that CDC is very, very high. Even though our Igbo brothers, who we do respect, I, I do know his son, who are very docile in terms of going to that CDC for the short time, you know, are getting their CDC in jail. Even market people on that basis, who are very, really, uh, don't like getting their CDC. You know, it's going to be a kind of work at uh, the media space, at uh, civil society, and uh, others have engaged uh, the civic uh, 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 process. Okay. The general show the fact that whoever remains in the different government houses, it has been their life for every four years. And because you must get the test person to fix your car, you will not check the tribe of the man. You will not check the clan of the man. You will not check the religion of the man. You will not even check the creed of the man. What you will check is whether or not that mechanic can fix your car. Once you are comfortable, they can speak the only kind of your children will use to go to school and do that thing. You will get a mechanic irrespective of wherever it comes from. Okay. And children should have this at the back of their mind. Therefore, on that day, on the polling day, on the, on, 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 the, on the day of election, they should get in mind they want to get a best mechanic to fix their car. Okay. Out to this mindset, they will put every other relevant emotional sentiment aside. And we need to get the best of something with the soundness of mind, with age in, in consideration, and every other thing that needs for a, a, a president in the future, with a president with, with a knowledge of ice, with a, with a president with knowledge with security using modern technology, with okay. a president that is modern to, to aspire, to, 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 to feel, to feel the, 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 the pollution. The hopelessness by this country okay. is gradually caving into and scholarship. These oh. are the things I will feel that Nigeria should do. All right, and, and, and if I, I, can, I can feel. I can feel the passion. In, I can feel the passion in your voice, and I can feel, um, you know, what you're saying. But I'm going to come back to grill you a bit on. Uh, uh, you know, more that what more the civil society space is doing. But let me come back to you, Timmy Fang, because you also told me over and over again that you're an activist, you're, you're pushing for a better Nigeria from, you know, outside of the country. Um, a few days ago, the, the presidency released a statement saying that the president has done his best and that the media should intervene uh, to rescue the Kaduna train passengers. Now, the presidency put out this statement on behalf of Mr. President, saying that the president has done his best. Now, the National Assembly, in fact, senators has given the president six weeks to end insecurity. Uh, they've also threatened uh, to, you know, impeach Mr. President. And in, on the floor of the, um, the House of Representatives, a few people walked out on the speaker, um, you know, on this issue of insecurity. Now, you obviously know what's happening uh, within the country. And if we must have elections in 2023 that will reflect the will, the true will of the people, uh, this issue does have to be dealt with. But going back to what Mr. President has said and, and the message that was released by the presidency, um, does it seem that we are getting anywhere close to dealing with this issue of insecurity? Or does it seem, that from the body language of the presidency, that we have been left on our own? Well, for me, I just want to make it very clear. If the president or the presidency has said the president has done his best, and this is the best he can offer, I think the Buhari has failed. And I can tell you clearly, this is not what Nigerians expected from a general. And when a general happened to be in charge and the country is sinking, that means he's a failed general. So I think at this point in time, what General Buhari should have done is to take a back and say, I'm going back to my village in Daura. I can no more longer lead, or protect, or defend the people of Nigeria because this is what I promised the people of Nigeria. So it is very clear as of today that the president has failed. The president does not have the capacity or the will or the idea to tackle the issue of the insecurity in the country today, you can see clearly how many months down the drain we able to make any progress on the Kaduna train attack victims. Today, the insecurity in the country is the heights 
of impunity from the laziness of the military and the laziness of the government to fight and tackle these issues that we are suffering today. For example, even in Abuja, that is meant to be federal capital territory, Abuja is no more longer safe. So I think these senators that are shouting for the impeachment or removal of the president, for me, it's coming too late. They would have done this long time ago. This should have happened like two years ago. But they are worried and they are bothered right now because they all live in Abuja. They know right now anything can happen to any of them. So now that the battle has been taken to Abuja, they are now shouting. Nigerians have been yearning, calling for help, calling for the National Assembly, including Northern leaders have called on the National Assembly before now to say impeach, commence impeachment process of the president. The National Assembly ignored because we have a rubber stamp and a lawyer boys in the Senate. But today, the battle has been taken to them in Abuja. The senators are now crying. How many months down the drain before this administration will be over? I can tell you clearly, this issue of impeachment right now, they cannot have the number. You need to dare to impeach the president from the both houses of us, from the both chambers. But as I speak, with this government, as I know, very clearly, they are going to fight back. This government does not care whether Nigerian people are dying. Every day, they come out to tell us we are winning the war. Every day, they will come out to tell us that Jirabwari has done better than previous government or the PDP government in the past. Remember, under President Jonathan, the insecurity was curtailed within the Northeast. But today, the 36 states in Nigeria is not safe anymore. Under the watch of a general who have all the ideas and the military background, I think General Buhari should be stripped off the name called general because he's a failed general. Quickly, Nigeria today, quickly. Nigeria today is the worst. Nigeria today is the worst country. Okay. The worst. I, I, I do not, I, I do not necessarily agree with that because when you say Nigeria is the worst, I mean, there are other states who are literally uh, at war and we're not at war. We're, we're facing in serious insecurity challenges. But I don't when think you, you can say that we're people, the worst. Listen, let me tell you, we're the worst. I can tell you clearly, in a country where you kidnap 100, 250 people every day kidnap in all parts of the country, in a country where people die every day in numbers, Well, quickly, uh, I, I wanted to ask for solutions, but I think we lost you there. So quickly, no. um, Nefa, I, I want to ask you quickly because we're almost out of time. In, in, in 60 seconds, because we've seen all the problems, we've laid them out on the table. What are the possible solutions? If the president is saying, we've done our best, Mr. President has done his best. The National Assembly is saying, no, your best is not good enough. We're going to start an impeachment proceeding. If at, at the end of six weeks, you're unable to deal with this issue. But I'm even wondering to myself, is six weeks good enough time to deal with this issue if we were to deal with it? Quickly. Yeah, I, I think I want to uh, align myself with uh, the view of uh, my colleague in the studio uh, that the president has failed. And, uh, and I find Nigeria, there is no other country in the world where the people would have tolerated the president to stay another one hour. So, uh, the choice is in the hand of the girl to so either go to Sri Lanka way or wait for the presidential election to boot out uh, the party that are putting this to do. But on the evening, if I to advise my president, the proper thing to do in this circumstance is to sack all the service chiefs. Why would the NA, the advantages of NA still keep his job? Why should the general director should still keep his job? Why should they go the cost of Kuche? But we did, but we, but in effort, we pushed for these, what we pushed for service chiefs to be changed. What change took place right after changing these service chiefs? So again, if we keep yeah, sacking yeah, service yeah, chiefs yeah, and nothing, no, nothing uh, happens at the end of the day, what's the essence? Yeah, no, no. There are young men, and uh, women in the army, in the police, that are ready to start this country. If it means for you to fire five in the train, 
in the chain of command for younger officers and elevated officers in general. And let them fight. The, the, problem, the problem with uh, the war we are having is that there is lack of political will on the part of government. You can even see the attitude of government to what happened in Kujé. We you have to go. You can even see the attitude of government to what is happening to the military guard of the country. Mm. <laughs> It's quite sad, but... Uh, we can't do that anywhere. We can't do that anywhere in the world. Mm. We, are, we, are, we, are the, we are the president want to have the political way to okay. fire people we hire. I think that one thing that the Bwari must keep is the legacy and the capacity of the electoral process in 2023. I will be advising that he, 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 he should do everything humanly possible to make sure that it starts from INEC, the duty, Okay. So make sure that the election clear, clear. We, All right, we, 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 we have, have to go, NFA. we're out of town, uh, time, I beg your pardon. We had, we're out of time. We have to go. Thank you so much. NFA George Will is uh, the uh, is of the civil society organization in River State. And, of course, Timmy Frank is a former um, publicity, national publicity secretary of the All Progressive Congress and is now, obviously, uh, in some form of activism to fight for a better Nigeria. I want to say thank you, Mr. Timmy Frank, for being part of the conversation. All right. Thank you, thank you so much. And that's it on the show tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you had a good time because tomorrow we will be back talking about the biggest stories in our political scene. And of course, we're talking always for development. I am Mary Anacone. Have a good night. <laughs>